It's been two and a half years since the React team has graced us with a major release of React, but recently they have released the release notes for React 17, which is the upcoming release, and what I am dubbing the most boring release of React yet, given that it has zero new features. But don't get me wrong, when I say boring, I don't mean bad. I just mean, well, boring. And some might say that the React and the JavaScript world need more boring releases and that they don't want new features coming out all the time. And I'm in agreement with that. I'm totally good with the React team doing stuff like this, but that doesn't make the release, well, any less boring. The goal of the release is to make it very easy to upgrade to because what it enables is for you to easily run one version of React and then another version. If you're some like mega corp legacy software where you don't wanna touch the React old code, but you wanna like play with some of the new React things, you can now do that sort of stuff with React 17 at least a lot easier than you could before. Also note, it is currently just a release candidate, so the official release is not out yet, but it should be coming soon, just like concurrent mode. <laughs> Before we jump into the changes of React 17, I do want to address the elephant in the room, which is concurrent mode and suspense and just all that other jazz. And the main question is, where the heck is it? I was actually talking to somebody the other day who knew the release date of concurrent mode, but, uh, well... It's kind of awkward, but they kind of just disappeared on me. Recently, Andrew Clark, who works on the React team, tweeted, RE, concurrent mode. I completely understand the frustration. We hyped it up too soon. We thought because we had successfully shipped it at Facebook, we were close to a stable release. We agree it's not easy enough to work with yet. That's precisely why we have postponed the release. If you're skeptical of the overall vision, I don't blame you, but please remember that we haven't fully shared it yet. We shared some glimpses in the spirit of quote unquote openness, but we haven't yet told the full story. I'm optimistic that we can still win over the skeptics. The TLDR being, they're still working on it. And it's been kind of interesting to watch the React team handle concurrent mode because they have basically two sides that are like yelling at them. They have people that are just like itching to get their hands on concurrent mode and they've been wanting it for a while and they feel like the React team kind of teased them and they're like, give it to us, I need shiny toys. And then you have these people on the other side that are really worried about concurrent mode and are worried like how confusing it's gonna make React and that's just gonna ruin React and make the learning curve ginormous. And the React team has decided to be patient, continue to work on it and make sure it is more intuitive before they actually release something out there. Whether that's the right decision we'll have to wait and see when it's released i am very interested to see like what it will look like when it is out compared to the preview that we got and how much it is warped or changed and uh, if that at all will be worth it but personally i have not lost faith in the react team if they wanted to release concurrent mode now in the next few weeks that's dope will they probably not and i'm fine with that too if they want to take a couple more months a couple more years that's cool but but hopefully not a couple more years, hopefully. But anyway, with that kind of just looming in the future and like at any time there could be just this giant bomb that drops on the React community, it doesn't feel like React is becoming stagnant or stabilizing, even though it might look like that per se, I guess, with React 17, because it's a light release. Um, but I think we have just kind of pushed all features into this giant thing that is coming. We're going to be going through the changes in React 17 now. And the first one has to do with events. So in React, when we want to listen for like button clicks, we just pass a function to a on-click prop. And underneath the hood, what React is doing is it does not create an event listener for every single button that we create. Instead, it pulls the events by adding an event listener at the very top at the document level, or at least that's how it worked in React 16. And so we have buttons here in divs, and they are all listening or have, there's one listener up here that's listening for all those events to happen. So Rachel Neighbors made this nice little picture. That's how it works on React 16 on the left. But React 17 on the right is a little bit different. And how it's gonna work is instead of having the listener be here, it's gonna be wherever you call React DOM.render. So for example, the root element div. And the idea being you can have multiple versions of React which have different React DOM.renders and so they will have different listeners now. And before there were some conflicts with this happening and they all being at the document level. As far as what this means for the average React developer, probably not a lot and you probably don't need to change any of your code. But if you do have some code that uses add event listener at the document level or you're using stop propagation, you probably wanna come just read these real quick and double check, none of your code is gonna be affected by this. But for most of you, you can just kind of ignore this and live your life like nothing changed. The next change has to do with the on scroll event. It no longer bubbles and it kind of helps to see a visual of this. 
So there is a code sandbox that they had with a bug in it and React 16, or not really a bug, but it kind of confused some people. So here we have just a scrollable list. And so we have this guy right here, which has the elements inside of him. And basically the on scroll is being called up here, right? So when we scroll up and down, this is being triggered. If we open this up, React scroll is being logged, at least in React 16. Now, if we switch this over to React 17, and then we do the same thing, all right, and we scroll this now, there's nothing in the console anymore. You're getting rid of event pooling, which gets rid of a bug you might have run into, where you have like a handle change and you have your event there, and then you use the callback function for updating the state, and then you try accessing the target on the event, so e.target.value, and then this would not work. And to actually get this to work, you would have to call e.persist, at least in React 16. But in React 17, we don't have to worry about it, it just works. They're leaving the persist function, it still exists on the object of an object, but it just doesn't do anything now. The use effect cleanup function is also changing, so you know that function that you could pass as a return whenever you call use effect, this thing right here. So it is now going to be called asynchronously, right? So what this means is if your component is say unmounting, the cleanup function will run after the screen has been updated. This probably won't mess up any of your code unless you're doing some weird stuff with refs. The example they showed that you could run into trouble with is right here, where basically in the cleanup function, you're trying to access the ref, which happens to be an object inside of that you have say like a function or something you want to access. And because this is now asynchronous, uh, they are going to be cleaning up the refs or they possibly could clean up the refs and I guess make current null. And so then you could be calling something that's null and run into problems. So I tried recreating this and I just have this component that I'm conditionally rendering. And so I have a button that I can just toggle this on and off and it'll display it. And then my thing component up here has a ref, which is some ref. And inside of this, we have an object and you can see I have the two functions there. And so I have my use effect here and I just say some ref dot current and I'm calling this. So you'll notice they also have a lint rule that's telling you, hey, you're doing something bad and it can possibly get cleaned up and then this is null and cause you problems. Um, but as you can see, it's kind of just working fine for me right now. So I'm not sure if it's some sort of like race condition or something else. I tried like a few different things, like in their example, they didn't have a dependency array. So if we click this, still works for me. Also, I tried like doing a set timeout. I thought that might have been it. Like if it was, I just had to wait, like if my function took a while to run or something, but I turned this on to like five seconds. Ah, that's too long, let's do three seconds. We'll give that a save and we'll just toggle it. And then I'm gonna hide it. Well, actually let's just save, refresh, you know. We'll hide it, we'll wait, and it's just gonna clean up fine. It's not gonna air out, everything's gonna be all fine. So I'm not sure how you, cause the problem or if it's just gonna happen like randomly. But anyway, if you do have code like this, you are just going to have to change it up slightly. And the way they had an example to fix it is you just have a const variable that you set right here and then you set the current equal to that. So you just say some ref dot current and then whatever you wanna call this and then you call it here and then you can call it down here as well. And then you won't run into any problems with say this thing going away or becoming null and be mutated. The other thing about the use effect cleanup function becoming asynchronous is it looks like there may be a small gap between when the component has unmounted and when the cleanup function has run. And so in that gap, you can have basically an async function call that then calls set state. And then you can run into you know, some problems with four where it'd be like, hey, you unmounted a component, but then you update the state. Um, but React is now gonna handle that small gap and it's not going to show a warning if it happens in that case. So let me show you what I mean by that. So you could have some code that looks like this where you have a use effect and you are fetching some data. In this case, I put my fetch call on a set timeout just to make it a little bit slower. That way I can show you further example. So if we were to say unmount this thing component while this was loading, we would be calling set data whenever this finishes when thing is not mounted. So if I refresh this and it's currently loading, I unmount it and we let it finish. We then will get a warning in the console here that says, can't perform a React state update in mount component, etc. right? And so what you do to fix this is you can write a use effect 
and you create a ref. So for example, you could call this is current and we are gonna say actually defaults to true, lowercase true. And we'll import this. And so the idea is you say after we have unmounted, you say is current is false. So we're just setting the ref after the component has unmounted. And then in our dot then here, we can be like, if is current dot current, we can just say decided not to update. Otherwise you can do this. So now with this check in place, if I refresh this, and I get rid of this, it's now gonna know we unmounted the component. It's gonna set is current to false. And then so it comes here, it's gonna be like decided not to update. And then you don't get that warning there. And so now with use effect becoming, or at least this cleanup function becoming asynchronous, there could be that gap. And so this could not happen in that time. But React is not gonna print that warning for you anymore. You're good to go. So that is what that is talking about there. Now when you don't return anything from forward ref or from memo, like you just have your button sitting in the middle here and you forgot to push return, it is now going to error out in React 17 just to let you know, oopsie, you messed up. They are also improving the error message that you get when an error is thrown inside of your React application. They're calling this native component stacks. And let me show you how that works. So in React 16, when you throw an error, it'll look something like this. Um, the main thing to look at is it says in Bob and in div and in app. So you can kind of see the tree of your component here. And uh, as you can see on my code on the left, all I'm here is I'm just throwing an error in my Bob component. And now if we switch over to React 17 and we just throw that same error, it's going to be slightly different. Um, and you'll notice we get at Bob, at div, at app. But the difference is we now actually have a link to where it was thrown in the source code. So that is pretty cool. And also apparently it is supposed to give you good symbolic component stack traces in production as well. Um, I just tried deploying the application and this is what the error looked like to me. So it didn't really give me symbolic thingies. It just says uga e e ya v. So I don't know if uh, what I need to do. I'm guessing that source maps were just off by default on mine and I need to turn those off to get better um, stack traces, um, but it, it's kind of vague here what you actually do to get those, so I'm not quite sure. Lastly, they're removing some private exports that I guess React Native for web was using, but probably no one else was using, so you can just pretty much ignore this because you're not going to be affected. And there you go, that is React 17.